I hope I get across the idea to you that maths can be really enjoyable and really creative. Um, but also, um, I've got a task today which is a little bit different because I don't think anyone will be able to find exactly the right answer. But maths is really good for us to be able to kind of estimate and use in the real world as well. Um, so today's task is again inspired by this chap called Graham Fletcher from Canada. I don't think anyone will find exactly the right answer. And that's not the idea. It, it's something that I think is a really enjoyable thing based on measures where you're going to have to be able to estimate and think about what do I need to do to calculate and what, whereabouts will the answer be. And I hope you see your success packaged up in that process. Uh, it's going to be very, very different today. Um, and we'll start again with just a recap of some of the skills we've built actually over the last few weeks. Now, just before I started filming this episode, I received an email of some absolutely amazing thinking based on this task from yesterday, this broken clock task. So I thought we'll share this first, and I'm sure you'll share with me my interest and amazement at this example that came through. So we looked at this broken clock example, and I showed this hour hand, and I said, well, what time could it be? Approximately what time would it be based on this hour hand? And I gave this example. I thought, well, looking at that, that looks like it's about 10 past 10. Um, and then I received this from Luke, as I say, just before I was about to film the rest of uh, what we're doing today. How amazing is this? So here we have the IC maths estimate, um, correctly saying 10 past 10. Well, correctly saying that was the estimate I provided, 10 past 10. Now, you notice here that Luke's noticed something. The hour hand has gone one fifth of the way to the next hour. OK, so can you see Luke's thinking is it is absolutely there, the hour hand where it's pointing. So it's and that is a fifth of this way um, and a fifth of an hour, a fifth of 60 minutes is actually 12 minutes, not 10 minutes. Can you see this is demonstrated here with the intervals? So that is five jumps um here for, for this five minute spell so we need to actually split them and that's one of them so actually what we've got to do is split 60 minutes into five so for the hour hand if it's moved one along that represents 12 minutes 12 minutes 24 minutes 36 minutes 48 minutes 60 minutes so actually luke has come up with what he thinks is a theoretically more accurate answer 10 12 now, that encompasses everything about what I want to encourage you to see. And what a brilliant example to kick us off with today. Thank you. Thank you, Luke. And well done. Um, now, we're actually going to go back today to something we did a few weeks ago because it's going to help us on the task that we've got. It, it is about time, today's task. Um, but it's also about scaling. So we had this example and it was 400 grams of turkey costs how much? When we know that turkey is... Uh, £1.60 per 100 grams. So we have to scale that up because if we're trying to buy 400 grams, then it will cost more than £1.60. It's £1.60 per 100 grams. So I've got to think, well, how do I scale that up? I need four lots of 100 grams. Four lots of £1.60 will be the cost. Um, and then uh, we can calculate it as being £6.40. Um, I wanted to share a few other examples of scaling because that's a skill we're going to need here. So here's a, a, another example um, linked to that one. So chicken costs £1.20 per 100 grams. How much does 600 grams of chicken cost? See if you can give your answer. Is it an, a, a, an answer you can give exactly or approximately as well? So pause the video and have a think about this one. Okay, and, and if you're ready, let, let's have a look. Um, so here, what would I do to calculate the cost? Well, I would need six lots of £1.20 um, to get up to 600 grams and so that would be £7.20. It would be exactly £7.20. Have a look at this next example. Now Nicola is a typist and her typing speed is 60 words per minute and believe me that's fast. Okay so how many words will Nicola be able to type in eight minutes? Pause the video. OK, and if you're ready, let's have a look. Um, so calculation I would do here is I would do 60, the number of words you can type per minute, multiply by 8. Uh, 60 times 8 is 480. However, this time, I would say that the answer is approximately 480 words because I couldn't be absolutely certain that if I timed Nicola for eight minutes, that it would be exactly 480 words. 
because her speed is about 60 words a minute to you know to the nearest word in a minute now it might be it's ever so slightly more than 480 or ever so slightly less or maybe it would be exactly 480 um, but for this one in this context I couldn't say for sure it would be 480 like I could in the example before I could say exactly the cost have a look at this last example here so Sam can do 30 press-ups in a minute how many press-ups can Sam do in five minutes? Pause the video and have a think about this one. It's a little bit different, this one. Okay, let's have a look. Now, there's a few examples, uh, answers even, that, that could be given here. I'll tell you what my estimate was. It, it was this. I, I thought about 80. Now, that might seem strange. You might be thinking, no, hang on a minute. You can do 30 in a minute, five minutes, five lots of 30. Be able to do 150. Well, I have to say, unless he's... You know, he's much stronger than me. If you can do 30 press-ups in a minute, well, I think the second minute you wouldn't be able to do another 30 because your arms would be too tired. And then the minute after that, you'd do even less. Now, my guess in this context is Sam would be able to do about 80 press-ups in five minutes. Um, and again, you might think, no, it'd be a little bit more, a little bit less. But I think in this context, we could agree it, it wouldn't be five lots of 30 because I think eventually his arms would just get too tired. Now, today, we're going to do a quite incredible task where we're going to look at a world record attempt for clapping. It's called the clapper, and it's courtesy that this task was put together by a man called Graham Fletcher. We've seen his work before, so full credit to Graham here. So we're going to look at the start of a world record clapping attempt now. We're going to have a look at the first few seconds, and your job is going to be to estimate how many claps you think that the clapper is going to be able to do in this world record attempt. Um, so we're about to see the very first part now. One, two, three, four. So what we've just seen in this world, the start of this Guinness world record effort, um, we saw, this is Brian, and we saw Brian start clapping after 4.709 seconds. And he'd, he'd managed to do 107 claps after 12.703 seconds. Now your task is this, see if you can come up with an approximate for how many claps you think he will manage inside this one minute. So you're gonna, in a moment, pause the video and you're gonna have to think, well, how am I gonna be able to calculate that? How can I work out approximately how many you will do. Now, I would be very surprised if anyone gets exactly the right number, but see if you can commit to an exact number of claps you think that he'll manage to do in that time. Um, and and how you know that, what what calculation do you do that, that helps to come up with that approximation? Uh, so pause the video now and only start again when you've committed to a number. So Brian managed an amazing 804 claps uh, to set the world record. I thought he even looked quite tired towards the end. I could I kind of start to hear him breathing. Um, I thought it'd be good to have a look at the kind of calculations that might be appropriate in coming up with an estimate. Now, of course, you're not wrong if you don't find the answer. It'd be very, very unusual that you would be able to. Um, but we, we knew he started clapping after about 4.7, well, after 4.709 seconds and almost exactly 12, uh, 8 seconds later, sorry, he'd clapped 107 times. 
So kind of a calculation that I might do there is think, well, eight seconds is equal to 107 claps. That's the rate. And think, well, how many lots of eight seconds is there in a minute? In 60 seconds, 60 divided by eight, it's about 7.5 lots of 107. So if I do that calculation, that gets me to 802.5 claps. Now, I have to say, I estimated down a bit. I thought he might have slowed down slightly in his clapping rate. But not at all. In fact, he managed ever so slightly more to go at a slightly faster rate. Ah, oh, absolutely amazing example here. Now, today's task, just like normal, click the blue link underneath the video. Now, who is to know what you're going to make of this example here? This is an extend task. Have a go if you want to. Um, and it's about making your own scaling up task. I mean, goodness me, what am I going to expect back from this? Um, I, I've got some ideas and here's my guidance, but you can be your own genius, make your own uh, examples. Who knows what you're going to come out with? I thought you might try and perform some kind of a task where you can work out the number of some things that you can do in a set time. So you might have to think what that is. And that becomes like the answer to your question. And then show someone maybe how many of them you can do for the first few seconds. And then they have, we have to be able to predict how many in total. Um, again, I mean, I, I'm sure I won't be able to share all the examples, but my goodness, I would love to have a look at some of the examples you send in and hopefully share some of them uh, when we're back as well. Um, in some of these contexts, we might expect you to keep going at about the same speed. Now, the example I gave for that was skipping. It, I would imagine there, if we could see how quickly you can skip for 10 seconds, you might be able to keep that going for a minute, for example. Whereas if there'll be other actions like maybe doing press ups, the example earlier, where, where it might be a little bit different. We might be able to see how many you could do in 10 seconds, but we wouldn't really expect you to be able to keep going at that same speed for a whole minute. And that's going to really, really uh, deepen our thinking. Um, so uh, I cannot wait to see what you come up with. Well, I hope you found today's video really, really great fun, like all the others, really inspiring. Um, I'm going to be off for a week because it's actually a holiday week, as strange as that might sound, next. So I'm going to be back with more videos on the 1st of June. And I'm going to kind of keep going as long as schools are closed or, or part closed. Now, there'll be some children that might end up, might end up going back to school on the 1st of June. And we want you back at school, back with your teachers. Hopefully watching these videos will mean that you can bring something new back to your class as well. Um, but if this is the last one that you get to take part in, I hope it's been really super helpful for you. I'm going to keep going as well. So parents, teachers, I would love to know, is there anything I can do on the upcoming videos to be more helpful? Um, but have a fantastic holiday, everyone. And it's been brilliant having you all involved.